It's James Photography and today I'm going to do a little demonstration and show you um, a technique called back button focusing. Okay, back button focusing. You may have heard of that before. You may think, why do pros use that? You don't have to be a pro, you can be anyone to use it. But I'm going to show you why back button focusing is so brilliant and amazing. And once you get the hang of it, and it takes a while, it takes a couple of hours, um, you'll never go back. Once you realize the potential of back button focusing, basically it's like having one button that can do two things just with one button. So imagine when you're driving a car, you can have the clutch and the brake doing two completely different things, but you just press one and you can control the other or you know just with one pedal it'd be that sort of kind of thing um back button focusing now most cameras um speaking of cameras sorry i've got two here for demonstration uses i've got a dslr the trusty nikon d750 and i've got a mirrorless fuji xt2 um i've just bought this it's the first second hand one i saw so i've got quite a good deal on it literally within the hour um this is a trial and I'll be doing another review on it later on because I'm testing the guts out of it at the moment because it is a crop sensor. This is full frame, but I do like the mirrorless side of it and the viewfinder is amazing and um, it seems to match the autofocus and things like that. And also it's got two dual memory card slots, two, which is amazing. So for professional work, you don't want to photograph with just one memory card, especially if it's someone's wedding, their special day and things like that. But um, I'm not going to do a review on this. I'm getting hold of some more lenses later on, like the 50 to 140 and a couple of primes. I've got the the standard 18 to 55 on it at the moment, um, and it's it's lovely. It's sharp. It's nice. So at the moment, I'm just using that, but I will be using it with the 50 to 140 and things like that, and really, really testing this camera. And also, it, I won't get a battery grip just yet, but I know that the battery grip makes it a lot better. Sorry, I'm I'm going on. Let's get back to back button focusing on most cameras like the Nikon D750 here, there's a dedicated button at the back, okay, AFL and AFE lock, so you can lock the exposure with the back, move it around and it won't change, or you can lock the focus, move it around. Now, you're used to that with the focus probably, because most people, even mobile phones and things like that, when you press the shutter button and half press it, it will focus, and if you haven't turned the beep off, it will go beep beep, and the focus will stay, we're all used to doing that. So you can go beep beep on someone and then you can recompose and the focus won't change. And then if you push the shutter all the way down, then it will take the picture. Great, that's fantastic, great for recomposing. Um, and on the Fuji, even though it's a lot smaller, it's actually got the two buttons there, the AFE lock, the exposure lock and the AFL. So it's got the two buttons there on the back. So with your thumb, it's quite small and I've got big thumbs. Um, you can jiggle around between the two. That's great. That's been a bit of a complaint with the Nikon D750, but it's only got the one button there for that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to bring in an old friend here. The Nikon D700, I've still got it. And you can see there that this was more of a pro body in its day. It's got the two buttons, so you could jiggle around, exposure lock, focus lock, exposure lock, focus lock. Brilliant. And many people complain about the D750 only having the one. So you can't go exposure lock and things like that. Now, with back button focusing, it doesn't matter if you've got the one, okay? Um, like other mirrorless cameras, you might not have the two buttons there. It doesn't matter. Um, you can customize these cameras like anything. There's FN buttons all over them. So exposure lock, if you really want that, we'll move on to that later. Even if you've got the one button, like the Nikon D750 has. There. Don't worry, we're going to move on. Right, so as I said before, most cameras, you're in single focus. You press the shutter, beep, beep, half down, and it locks focus. And you can do what you like with it, okay? And then if you push full way, it takes the picture. That's what we're used to. Right, now there's two focus modes. Usually there's three on a camera, but ignore one of them. It's a, it's a sort of an automatic programmable program type focus just forget it Let's see if it will zoom in here right here we've got m which is manual c which is continuous and s which is single okay you can flick it again very pro here like the d700 
it's got the same. It's got a switch there. C, S and M, so it's manual, single and continuous. The D750 hasn't got that, but what you have to do is press that in. So this is your, you can switch it to manual or autofocus. But if you press the button, which is not an issue, then the top appears and then you can change it to all the different things, single, whatever. Uh, so there's C, continuous, oh, wrong one, and there's single, S, and there's C, okay, so that's what you do. Now let me explain, They're two, they are two different focus modes, single and continuous. Obviously the M button is for manual when you switch off the autofocus completely so you can really fine tune things if you want a manual focus or perhaps you're in the dark or something. But um, you've got the two settings, continuous and single. Now most of the time we're used to single focus with the half press. You go beep beep and it locks focus and stays there. Okay, And then when you push it, it takes the picture. So the shutter button does two things. It focuses, locks focus, and it takes the picture. Great, but there can be a problem with that as we go into. Now when you switch it to the C, down there, continuous focus, however you switch it, whatever camera you use. When you switch it to continuous focus, that's brilliant because it will then track subjects. If you hold, um, so the viewfinder probably in the middle, if you've got the, the point in the middle of the camera, as long as you move the focal point wherever you've assigned it to whatever you're following, like someone moving, someone walking, a dog, a fast moving car, if you've got it in continuous, it will track the subject, it will follow it, which is great. Um, and even if it's coming towards you, it will track it and it will stay in focus, which is fantastic. And once you, know, once you get used to continuous focus, and if your camera is quite capable like these cameras, and they don't even have to be this good, continuous focus is really, really good because if your subject suddenly starts to move, then it will track it and it will follow it. And another good reason why continuous focus is so good, because if you're in, say, single focus, and say something's coming towards you, let's say, for instance, a bride walking down the aisle. So here we go. Here's the bride. Here's a cup. Okay? The bride's walking towards you. Do, 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 okay? And if you're on continuous focus, it will track it. It will just keep going. And it will focus as you're walking down, and it could be erratic or whatever. If you're on single focus, where... It locks and goes beep beep. Once it locks, the focus stays where you left it. So as it's walking down, if it goes beep beep here, it locks focus there. Well, let's go a bit clo closer. So it's walking towards you, beep beep, but the subject's still walking and your focus is back here. Obviously that's extreme, but if, you, if you're using like a, an F1.4, like a lens like this, you know, you're really trying to isolate the subject. And even the slightest move, so beep beep, but the subject's still moving towards you. It's going to stay focused back here, not there. Whereas with continuous, if you hold that dot over, it will just stay focused on wherever. <laughs> is this making sense? I hope so. So continuous is great for that. It will track the subject and the focus will stay on the subject. It won't go beep beep and stay behind and then beep beep and have to keep beep beep catching up with it. See what I mean? That's quite good, that is. I'll do that again. So, walking down, beep beep, and then walking in front of it, beep beep. You've got to constantly beep beep, catch up with it. Continuous doesn't do that. It will track the subject, so it's great for that reason as well. And also, uh, say something static, like a small child or something like that, or, you know, standing there, and you're on continuous focus, you can focus on it there. It won't go beep beep on um, continuous, but you'll see a little green light in the corner up here, or whatever little symbol, it will lock, lock focus. It won't lock focus. It will focus on that, and then if the subject starts moving, if you keep the the focal point over it, it will just follow it. Okay, so it's brilliant. It's brilliant for that reason. Now the problem with continuous focus, which back button focusing solves. Okay, solves. If you want to recompose. So you lock focus, say, there, in continuous, 
and then you recompose the shot over here to sort of get more of that in, whatever the focal point is on, it will focus on over here and you can't recompose here. So let's see if we can demonstrate this with the Fuji. Okay. I'll give this a go, this is an experiment. Okay, so I've set this up for my really big scientific experiment. Um, just wait for the phone to focus. Okay, right. Now I've got it in the traditional way where I'm gonna focus with the top button there. Now I'm in continuous focus, okay? I'm in continuous, so it's focused over there already. I'm gonna press the shutter and there it is, focuses on the nearest cup, okay? Now, because I'm in continuous, if I just hold the button down, half down, wherever I point that button now, it's gonna focus. See, it's focused on the cup over there. If I bring it back, it focuses there. So imagine that's a person over there, and then you track, 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 and it just follows the subject. And there's the door over there. There it is. So I'm half pressing the button, and it is tracking whatever the focus point goes on. So that's great. So here's my subject. Great. Here's a person or a thing that you want to take a photo of. Half press the button again. Focused. See the green light? Focused. See the green light? There it is. Now I want to recompose, but it's in continuous. So I move it over there, and I it's focused on the distance. Yeah? So now my image, the original one there, is out of focus. So I have to switch it to single now. Right, so let's focus on there, half press the shutter. There it is. Now, if I keep it there and recompose, the cup, the blue cup, or the blue pattern cup stays in focus, okay? Brilliant, now I can recompose, and if I push the button all the way down, there's the image, okay? But then if this subject starts moving again, and I half shut it, it's only gonna stay focused there. So if I try to focus over there, it's not gonna do it. So now I have to go back to continuous. There it is, the middle button, or on the D750. Um, I just I can do it with my fingers pretty quick. So now we're in continuous. Press it there, it's focused on there. And then it focuses on whatever you point it to. Okay. So that's continuous, but you can't recompose your subject. So there's the dilemma. So what do we do about this? Right, let's go to the menu. Is it gonna focus? Not very well. I'm not as familiar as Nikon with this. So you go to setting, button, layout. Now what we're gonna do, it's already in continuous. Shutter AF. I'm gonna go here quick as a side note. Shutter AF exposure lock. I've turned this off. If you turn it on, when you half press the shutter, it'll keep the exposure. So sometimes it can be really bright and if you move it away, it'll be even brighter, okay? Because it'll keep the exposure where you last pressed half shut button, however that's supposed to be said, okay? But if you're in continuous and you're trying to track a subject, when you half press the button, it's gonna keep the exposure where it was. And you don't want that. You want it to adjust as it's tracking the subject. So that's a little side note. I've lost the page there, let's go back. So yeah, just be warned of exposure button lock thing. Right, buttons again. Where am I? Uh, shutter AF. Right, this is the shutter button. I'm gonna switch it off now. Boom. So now we're in back button focusing. I've assigned this button here to focus. Now all the shutter button does is take a picture. You can half press it all you like. All it's gonna do is take a picture. So I'm in continuous focus now, okay? Let's try that again. So I focused on the cup. I'm pressing this button here. See the green light there? That's my focus button now, not the half button on the shutter. There's my focus, move it over there, and it's focused on that cup over there. Move it back, come on, focus there. I'll just let it be said, the D750 is a lot quicker, but it is low light in here, um, okay? It's quite a gloomy day. Right, so I'm in continuous again, just like before. 
but I'm using the back button. Now, I'm letting go. Can you see where it's at? Can you see what's happening? It is not focusing wherever I put the focus point. So that is still in focus. So I'll take the picture now with the shutter, and all the shutter does is take the picture. There it is, recomposed. Now the subject starts moving. Oh no, right, focus over there, there it is. Nope, he's moved back there. Do you get what's happening? Subject's moved over there now. Right, now I want to recompose again. Let's move it over. I've let go, recompose. Now that cup is in focus. See? <laughs> is it sinking in? The genius of it. There it is. Push the back button. And it'll track, track. Right, subject stayed still. Let go, recompose. Take the shot. That's back button focusing. You do not need to ever use single focus again, ever. You just leave it in continuous focus and you've got single focus and continuous with the touch of one button, okay? Now, I hope that's made sense. Now, with this camera, you've got a dedicated auto exposure lock there. So if you want to expose the lock there, great. You can um, save the exposure and just move it around, okay? Right, we're gonna switch it off. But with other cameras, like the D750, and many people have criticized it for this, it's only got the one button at the back. So let's do that. You're not gonna see it, but I'm doing the same here. Focusing. I'll show you the uh, focus. You watch the camera. There. So I'm in continuous. It's moving around. As I move around, but if I let go, let go, oh, I'll stay in continuous, moving around, focusing like mad. If I let go now, it's not focusing at all, and I'm pressing the shutter button, it's not focusing at all. Right, I'm pressing it again, now it's focusing. Brilliant. Now, with the D750, you've only got that one button at the back, that one there. So, all I've done is just gone into the custom menu settings. Uh, I won't go through them all, they're in there somewhere. Um, and I've dedicated one of the FN buttons. Oh, it's really dark, I'm so sorry. There's an FN button there. There's another one there. So I've dedicated that to exposure lock. So let me try and get over here. As I hold the D750, I'm back button focusing like this. And then if I do want to hold the exposure, this finger here, that one, hits that, and then it's exposure lock. And if you can see that button, it's there, exposure lock. This one's for something else, and you can customize buttons all around. So if I want to exposure lock, I've got that, and then it won't move the exposure, it'll stay the same, and then I'll let go, and it goes. So I haven't got one there, like the Nikon D750, but I've got a customizable button here and here, so I can have what I like, exposure lock. Now, uh, there is a little problem with not being in single focus when you're using a flash. Because if you're in a low light situation like weddings and people are dancing and moving and there's lights going everywhere, then um, sometimes it's really handy with the speed light on the top it throws out the red beam, and it's a lot better than the rubbish little beam that comes from these cameras here. It's sort of less intrusive as well. It throws out a red beam, and then the camera will lock on to the red beam, and the flash will go off, and you've got a focused picture even in the dark. Now, if you're in continuous focus, just make note of this, the red beam won't come out. So in that situation, when it's low light, and you're using the focus assist from a speed light, which is the red beam, sort of like red speckled dots, so it's not so intrusive. People don't really mind. You have to put it in single focus, okay? You have to put it in single for the AF assist. Even if you use that one, it has to be in single focus. So that's the only time, literally the only time I ever use single focus is just to get the red beam assist from the speed light. That is it. Other than that, it's in continuous all the time. I never have to switch to single. 
and I've got the back button to focus, all the shutter button does is take the picture. So wherever you put the point, if you're not touching the focus button, it won't focus. It will just take the picture, whether it's out of focus, whether it's in focus, it will just take the picture and nothing else. But in continuous, with the back button, you can lock focus on whatever, let go, and then it won't focus anymore. And then if your subject starts moving, hit it again, and then it'll track it. And it'll also keep it in focus as it's moving around. It won't, you won't lose sometimes a, a couple of inches or something with movement or whatever. Because when you're at a shallow depth of field, like with say an f1.4 like this, millimeters make all the difference. Right, that was about as least professional video about back button focusing you can get. But I hope with the little cups, <laughs> it sort of made sense. And sorry, it's so gloomy in here. It's really bad. I need some new light bulbs, I think. Um, but I hope it's helped. What, give it a go for a couple of hours. Switch it in continuous focus. Turn your shutter off for focusing and assign one of the buttons at the back or wherever you want the button for focus. I mean, but with this... XT2, it's so small, my thumb struggles to get there. So I'm thinking of assigning this button here for focus. So I can just use my middle finger there and then bing, 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 and that will focus and I can concentrate on the shutter. So however you want to assist, um, assign the focus button, once you get used to it, on, off, brilliant. And then you've literally got one button for continuous and single to track a subject, to recompose. It's brilliant back button focusing learn it you won't regret it and then once you've got the hang of it it'll all fall into place like oh yeah i see so the xt2 i will be doing a review on it it's mint condition i am liking it so far and the image is straight out of jpeg on this thing oh my goodness um i'm starting to see do i really need to shoot raw with this thing seriously it's that good the JPEG straight out of this camera in standard, not with like Velvia or whatever they call it, Provia and that sort of thing, Vivid. Um, fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to be playing around with this, deciding whether to keep it or not. And that'll be another time. So like I said, sorry if this is a crazy video, really unprofessional with cups and stuff, but back button focusing. I hope it works for you.